The goal of Jamia Ahmadiyya is to furnish the students with the optimal tools and training ground to undergo this spiritual transformation, to discover God Almighty, to strengthen their bond with Him, and to help others find their Creator as well. Welcome to the first Jamia in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> جب دنیا کی اکثریت مادیت میں گرفتار ہو کر اپنے خدا کو بھول کر روحانی لحاظ سے ظلمت اور طریقے میں ڈوبی ہوئی ہے اس میں اپنوں اور غیروں کے لیے کتب بننا آپ کا کام ہے ان کا کام ہے جنہوں نے اپنی زندگیوں کو اس مقصد کے لیے پیش کیا ہوا The story of Jamia Ahmadiyya began over a hundred years ago at the time of the promised Messiah after the demise of two great companions, Hazrat Abdul Karim Sial Goti Sahib and Hazrat Burhanuddin Jhilmi Sahib anhuma, a great void was felt by the promised Messiah To fill this void and to create scholars who would propagate the message of Islam Ahmadiyyat to the corners of the world, the promised Messiah laid the foundation of Jamia Ahmadiyya. Jamia Ahmadiyya is the premier institution for training of our religious uh, teachers, Murabiyan missionaries. And the progress of the Jamaat uh, is uh, closely related with how much effort we make in the field of Tabligh and how good is uh, our own Tarbiyat. So for this purpose, the establishment and maintenance of uh, Jamia Ahmadiyya is uh, very important for Canada Jamaat. And this is where it all began back in 2003. <laughs> I'm here in Jamia since uh, day one, September 7, 2003. Uh, I remember the first day and uh, we have no idea how we are getting there, Ms. Saga. And then um, somehow they arrange a few vans and these students were transported there. Once the, the interviews happened and we got our the, the final word from, from Hazuri Anwar Yatala bin Asli Aziz that we were allowed to start Jamia, there were 28 of us. So we would wake up in the morning, um, obviously after, after Fajr, and uh, we would get ready to go to Jamia. And this was an hour drive getting there. And the first thing that we would look forward to that would really shake us up in the morning 
were the lectures of Mubarak Nazir Sahib. So um, after doing attendance in the morning, uh, Maulana Sahib would come in and uh, any thought that he has, uh, he would come and motivate us to just get us going every day. Jis taraf so I remember when Jamia started in 2003, I was in the second batch, so we started in 2004. I recall like we as students understood that this is the beginning of an institute and that they would build on this. Um, Sometimes people were saying, I mean, it's, it's, it's not possible, you don't have the resources and it's, um, it's impossible for you to run this kind of institution. But Alhamdulillah, with continuous guidance of Fazal Sahib, everything uh, happened possible, not possible, but very fruitful. that Hazur himself, Ayatollah bin Salih himself is coming to Canada, that will be something amazing and it, we would start preparing for it. We were encouraged for Hazur's arrival to, you know, uh, plant uh, beautiful flowers and, you know, make our front lawn look really nice. And I remember it was almost about 15 students that lived in the hostel at that time and we all worked together. And surprisingly, like, none of us had any experience in gardening. But it turned out so beautiful. And I remember we made like an outline in the grass of a moon crescent and a star. And it looked really cool. Peace Village uh, Jamaat, it was the whole Jamaat at that time, would have competition amongst the houses in, 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 dec in decoration. And uh, we would take part in it too. So um, we would go all out in making sure that our hostel looks the best uh, of all the houses in uh, Peace Village. So that if Hazur Anwayat Allah bin Azizi looks at it or he walks in, uh, he would be happy to see it. When we graduated from Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada in the first badge, we were uh, 14 of us. So yes, we were, we were happy because it was a long journey and it was coming to an end. But obviously there was a lot of pressure too because we didn't have anybody else that we can look up to. So we did not know how the whole uh, procedure will be. We were sent to Africa for, for six months, uh, followed by Pakistan. Now we were, we were able to stay in Rava for about three months or so. And then after that, uh, we stopped in London, UK to spend time with Hazur Anwar. And then Hazur Ayatollah bin Aziz mentioned that, know that uh, your jami is finished, but your studies do not finish. Make sure you continue reading the books of the Promised Messiah, the Jamaati literature. And also, as Uru Anwar Yatala bin Aziz said, that as, as missionaries, we should continue uh, reading the, the Nawafil as, and make this part of our daily routine. <laughs> By the grace of Allah, I see that there is um, a, a great advancement in, in every aspect, just as uh, it is the practice of 
divine communities to start in uh, very humble ways. But by the grace of Allah, through the prayers of the Khalifa of the time, and through the guidance of, of Hazur Anwar Talib Nasr Aziz, Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada has also progressed to great heights. वो भी है कुछ जो के तेरे इश्क से मखमूर है दुनिया भी आलाइशों से पाक है और दूर है with the prayers of Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih V, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz, Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada has made immense progress. From aspects of physical health, like sports and the food menu, to the moral upbringing of all students, all programs and activities are guided by beloved Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz. Education which is provided here is to develop the morals and uh, increase them in spirituality so that they can become true leaders of mankind. And after the seven years training, they are fully capable of leading people into the righteous life, the life which leads mankind towards the Creator. The seven-year spiritual and physical discipline of Jamia is designed to affect significant changes in the student. Through this program, he becomes a new person, ready to serve the Jamaat with every fiber of his being. Well, when Jamia students uh, join in the first year, um, they come with a great zeal and passion to serve the Jamaat. And that passion and zeal only increases as they increase in their spirituality and in their education and as they progress from one year to the next. And the difference I see in students by the end of Jamia is that they become more responsible, they become more obedient, they become better team players, and most of all, they develop a strong relationship with Allah the Almighty. So my first posting was uh, in GTA Center and uh, Mulana Mubar Nazisab called being, a, being the, the missionary in charge at that time. And he said that we need a missionary in Belize. And he said that you have literally have four days, get ready and, and you're, you will be going to Belize. I was in GTA Center at that time with my wife and kids. I told them that uh, you will be moving with my, my parents and my mother at that time. And I left right away. The grand task of a murabi is to help others connect with their Creator. This, of course, is not an easy task and definitely not possible without first establishing a personal connection with God Almighty. So an important message that I remember Hazur would really emphasize with Jamia students is building a relationship with Allah through our Salat, through our prayers, through Nawafil or Tahajjud. And I remember that emphasis was so much to the extent that it would motivate us to start testing out our experiences as an Ahmadi Muslim and building that relationship with Allah. And within those seven years, it gave us an excellent opportunity to, you know, test out that relationship and see how far we've reached in that relationship. Many of the students witnessed, you know, Allah Ta'ala's blessings. We witnessed the acceptance of prayer. Beloved Huzur himself oversees Jamia's day-to-day -day activities and the 18-hour daily routine which begins with the Hajjad and Fajr prayer. So the day starts off with the Hajjad prayer, you know, under the guidance of Hazuri Anwar, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr Hil Aziz, Jamia students are required to get up and, you know, read the Hajjad prayer in the morning, after which they walk to Bath islam Mosque for Fajr prayer. Following that, they go back to their hostels and read the Holy Quran in their respective rooms. Early morning, students convene at the campus and begin their day with a series of classes, with courses such as Arabic, Urdu, translation and commentary of the Holy Quran, comparative studies, and many more. The syllabus is prepared according to the instructions of the Khalifatul Masih, and it is implemented in seven years gradually. This knowledge is started from the Mumahida class, then Ula. In these two classes, you teach them basic teachings of the meaning of the Qur'an, 
either the Urdu language or the Arabic language. Along with Urdu, one of the main languages taught in Jamia is Arabic. Every year, Jamia holds special Arabic camps for first and second year students. بالنسبة لأهمية اللغة العربية للمبشرين الذين يتخرجون من الجامعة الإسلامية الأحمدية. أولاً علينا أن نعرف أن كل المصادر الإسلامية هي في اللغة العربية. التراث الإسلامي هو في اللغة العربية. القرآن باللغة العربية، الحديث الشريف، السنة النبوية. فلا بد إذا للمبلغ الذي سيتخرج من الجامعة الإسلامية الأحمدية لا بد له أن يكون قد تعلم اللغة العربية، قد تعلم أصول اللغة العربية وأساسيات اللغة العربية لكي يستطيع أن يفهم. هذه المصادر القرآن الحديث السنة النبوية ولممارسة اللغة العربية في الجامعة هناك المحاضرات يوميا وأيضا هناك مسابقات الخطابات الارتجالية وأيضا مسابقات الخطابات السنوية وأيضا هناك حصة أسبوئيا للخطابات ويخطو فيه الطلاب حسب دورهم وترتيبهم في الصفوف. Alongside their day-to-day -day studying, students also partake in competitions throughout the year to foster a competitive spirit, such as essay writing, speeches, qasida, and many more. <laughs> Self-development is not something that happens passively. In fact, it is putting divine wisdom into practice that brings to life everything that we learn. Studying is important, and so is an active and social lifestyle. Throughout the year, Students also compete in a number of sports competitions to accumulate points for their respective groups and win the running trophy. Activities include all kinds of sports, the 20k run and the highly anticipated obstacle race at the end. The four groups in Jamia, namely Amanat, Rafakat, Shujat, and Dayanat, face off in this you know, annual sports rally in a three day tournament. And the team or the group that wins the most sports um, get recognized for their efforts and they get the cup at the end of the rally. As any major competition has, there are a bunch of rivalries. And most of the time, it was very fier a fierce competition. However, uh, after the game is finished, we remember that we are still brothers and that there are no hard feelings during the matches. So the obstacle course has you know, many different obstacles. This year we had over 20 obstacles that the students or the ones participating had to get through. And our goal was to make it as difficult as possible. <laughs> So one of the toughest and physically demanding things that we do in Jamia and we kick off the year with this is the 40 kilometer run. Um, you know, it's essentially a marathon and you know with not very much training in, in, in these type of things. We just come in and, you know, almost all the students, except for those who are organizing it, have to take part in it. And it's very draining mentally and physically. And, um, you know, once you've done it at least once in your Jamia time, you know, if it's, a re it's really an accomplishment. And you look back and, you know, you can say that I did something that most people have never done, which is complete a 40 kilometer marathon. Throughout the year, recreational activities such as picnics, camping trips, Skiing and snowboarding trips are also arranged to rejuvenate and re-energize everyone's spirit and push them further ahead in their journey. In Jamia ski trip, 
This is actually something which I would have never imagined doing myself if it wasn't for Jamia. Just trying different uh, activities, different sports. For instance, I used to ski. Uh, I was very bad in the beginning. It's very difficult, but eventually got to a point where I could carry out this activity myself. Even uh, snowboarding was very difficult, but seeing others do it was uh, inspiring or motivating me to try as well. However, that didn't work out. A distinguishing feature of Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada is its international student body, composed of entrants from all around the world. Students from far off places such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, Trinidad and Tobago, Syria, the US and other countries have flocked to this institution to dedicate their lives for the service of Islam Ahmadiyya. By grace of Allah, Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada is not fulfilling the need of uh, just Canada and the United States. It's uh, really an international Jamia in the sense that uh, uh, students uh, from all around the world may seek admission in it. And at present also, we are having about 50% of the students are from overseas. Since Jamia Canada is an international institute, for this reason we have many students who come from different countries of the world many of them who don't even speak Urdu. And for them to learn this language, put in so much effort to not only learn it, but become fluent in it. This is very inspirational for us. Allah the Exalted states in the Holy Quran that all believers are brothers. In Jamia, this element of brotherhood is fortified exponentially with everyone focused and strongly driven to a common purpose, working, playing, and essentially living every moment together. It is the shared experiences of every day which strengthens this bond of brotherhood. The hostels are, are a safe place for us to just get together and just you know, chat with each other, just have fun, you know, eat and just sit down together. But then when you live with someone, you really get to know them and it helps strengthen our bond with each, each other and it increases our brotherhood. The brotherhood I've seen in Jamia and, and have experienced myself is unlike uh, anything I've ever experienced before. Students from all walks of life, all ethnicities, all races, all cultures, all backgrounds coming together to study about God the Almighty and His messengers and His teachings. By the end of it, we are all becoming better human beings in order to serve the cause of Islam and Madiyat and we have all established a better relationship with Allah Ta'ala. As prophesied by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, during the time of the promised Messiah wasalam, the sun will rise from the west. As Islam spreads in these parts of the world, Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada plays a crucial role in fulfilling this divine promise by guiding a lost and restless world back to its creator. By the grace of Allah the Almighty and through the prayers of beloved Hazur, Ayyad Allah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz, this institution will continue to flourish under the shade of Khilafat, inshallah. Say,